Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and this is a tutorial on uh, queues in Java. So um, I'm in Eclipse here and I've got a main method set up already. And uh, so let's take a look at what a queue actually is. And I'll have a comment here. And imagine you've got a queue of people in um, everyday life. So let's imagine that this string of O's is a queue of people. Um, in normal parlance, we say that people enter the queue at the end of the queue and they leave at the front of the queue. Um, so this is the front and this is the end of the queue. In programming lingo, um, the front of the queue is called the head. So items will leave at the head of the queue and the end of the queue is called the tail. So we add items to the tail of the queue. And a queue is a first in, first out structure, FIFO, uh, meaning that the um, first item that you remove from a queue will be the first item that you added. And in general, um, the, the sooner you enter a queue, the quicker you can leave it. And, and so like when you add an item to the queue, you're always adding to the tail and then you're removing to the head and you're removing from the head. And the items that you remove from the head are going to be um, are they going to be the items that you added the earliest? So um, let's take a look at an example. And um, if you go to um, go to Google and you search for Java and your versions like Java Seven in my case, and you search for Q, you get this um, quite nice API document. And if you look at here, look at all known implementing classes. You can see that the um, the kind of standard Java classes that implement the queue interface, and one of them is linked list. So um, everything that I'm about to say in this tutorial, basically, uh, well, not everything, but much of it, can apply to linked list as well. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. But I'm actually going to show you um, a different class in this tutorial, a different class that implements the queue interface which is array blocking queue. Because the thing about a queue is, um, just like in real life, a queue can have a maximum size to it. So uh, often in real life, queues can be endless, uh, as, as you well know. But like, um, it, it's possible or you could conceive that a queue could have a fixed limit. Like um, maybe you can only fit so many people inside the shop so the queue has a, a limit to how many people can actually be in that queue. And uh, and of course you need ways of dealing with situations if you try to add more items to the queue than can be in it. So let's take a practical example here. Let's look at array blocking queue. So um, I'm going to actually um, declare a variable here of the queue interface type. And let's make this a queue of integer values and I'll call this Q1 and I'll set Q1 equal to new array blocking queue and I could use linked list here uh, or any one of the other implementing classes um, so that's an array blocking queue of integers and uh, array blocking queue uh, and the reason that I'm actually choosing it here instead of linked list is that unlike linked list which um, has a potentially infinite size um, array blocking queue um, has like a fixed size to it. So you can say here, okay, I want a queue that has maximum three items in. Although, of course, usually, probably, it would be more than three items that you'd want to have in your queue. And I'll add the input there with Control shift and O. So this is a queue. It's a first in, first out structure with a maximum of three items in it. And um, queues have like two, the queue interface, it defines two separate sets of methods for working with the queue. And uh, if you look at the um, API document, uh, you can find this table here that shows you the two sets of methods. So for adding elements, we've got add. For removing them and returning them, um, we've got remove. And we've also got element, which allows you to look at the head of the queue. And uh, it, it's worth mentioning that you, you can just iterate through a queue. So I could use a for loop here, just like we did um, earlier in, in this series of tutorials. 
but I'll leave that for a minute. And let's take a look first at add, remove an element. And um, these methods, add, remove an element, throw exceptions if you try to do something that doesn't make sense. So let's add some values to the queue. Um, so I'll say q1.add and um, let's add the value 10. And I'll just copy that and I'll, I'll try to add uh, I'll add, try to add four items. So we've got a queue that has a maximum size of three and I'm trying to add four items to it. And if I run that now, we'll get this illegal state exception. But notice that add didn't force me to uh, put a try catch block in. So this is an unchecked exception, a runtime exception. Um, we're not forced to handle it, but we can handle it nevertheless. So if I put try here, I'll just do control space to auto complete that. And I'll change this to a illegal state exception. And I'll put my fourth add in there like that. And let's say here, sysal try to add um, too many, many items to the queue. And if I run that, it's going to catch my exception and say that try to add too many too many items there. So add will throw an exception if you try to add more than the capacity of the queue. But you won't see this exception with add if you use a linked list because the linked list uh, is not bounded. You can just keep adding items to it until your computer finally grinds to a halt. Um, so that's why I cho chose array blocking queue because I wanted to show you this happening. And of course, if you want to see what's in your queue, you can just use um, like a, a for loop. So I could say here for integer, um, let's say val or yeah value in um, Q1. And we could just say sysl, um, let's have Q value and plus Q uh, plus value here. So if I run that now, it's just a normal for each loop, and I can see what's in my loop in my queue. Okay, so that's add, and um, of course there's also remove. So I can say, um, let's say uh, value. Um, I think I can declare um, another value here, or is that still in scope? I think it is. So if I say here um, integer value equals q1 dot remove. Um, oh yeah, I wasn't actually sure whether I could have another value here, but I guess the scope the scope of this yeah is restricted to these brackets here, so I can. So if you call remove, um, it removes the head of the queue and returns it. Now the head of the queue here is um, first item we added. It's ten. So uh, let's take a look here. In fact, I'll declare a um, value here, and then separately I'll call remove, and I'll put here a sys out. Um, uh, removed from Q and let's say plus value. So if I run that now, I get removed from Q10 because 10 was the first value I added. And I can do that, of course, over and over again. So I've got three items in the queue and let's, um, let's remove all three. In fact, for simplicity here, I'll just put the remove directly in there rather than having this separate variable. And then I'll just copy this and remove, I'll try to remove four items, so one more item than there is in the queue. And you can guess now it's going to throw an exception, a no such element exception. So if I want to catch the possibility of that happening, and I'm not, again, I'm not forced to catch this, I'm not forced to put a try catch block around it, but I can do, um, then I can catch no such element exception. And let's say here, sysl try to remove, try to remove too many items from Q. And if I run that, that exception will be thrown. And finally, we've got um, the element method. So if I say here, um, let's look up here. So I could use element to see the head of the Q. So I could say sysl head of q is and there I could use the element method q1.element 
and if I run that it's going to tell me the head of the queue um, up here so head of the queue is 10 that's the first item in the queue and similarly if I try to call element when there isn't a head of the queue then it's going to throw a no such element exception so let's just put a comment here um, throws no such element exception no items in queue yet okay so that's one set of methods for working with queues and um, there is another set as well so if we look at the API document here you've also got offer poll and peak and uh, let's take a example so I'm gonna just put a big comment in here and let's have a second queue like this and I'll copy this and paste this in and let's try to do the same thing again basically so um, I want to pretty much do all the same stuff that I've done before I guess let's add a bunch of items here so I've got three items in this queue again and uh, let's make it two just to make it slightly simpler and so I'll try to add three items to a queue that has two items in it and let's then just view the contents of the queue and I'm going to change this here to um, queue two so we've got a second queue and I'll iterate through queue two so now if I run this um, there's uh, let's see we've got um, a um, no such element exception because I'm using add but let's change this to offer so offer offer and offer and if I run this now um, you see it it hasn't added um, it hasn't added this last item here Q value let's say Q2 value so this is my second Q um, but it hasn't thrown an exception either and in fact what offer does is it just uh, returns false if um, it can't add the item so I'm say here if q2 um, dot offer is false then let's let's say sysout um, offer failed to add third item and we'll see that that's that's coming out here and it's uh, it's the same with um, remove like if you try to remove um, sorry not with remove with um, poll so you can use poll to attempt to remove items from the queue um, I can say um, sysout um, q q2 q2 poll and let's say in here plus um, q2 dot poll so poll actually removes items and if I run this here we'll get the head of the queue which is 10 but if I've only got two items in the queue so if I call it three times then what will happen is it will return null the third time so poll uh, is just like um, it's just like remove except that instead of throwing an exception it returns null and offer is just like add except that if it can't add the item it just returns false and it's the same finally with um, with peak and if we try to peak um, at the head of the queue um, and there's nothing there then it will um, it will return um, null instead of actually giving me the item so let's say here q2 peak and let's uh, let's add here um, let's add here q2.peak and if I run that then peak you'll see is saying null but later on when I've added item, items to it this will get me the head of the queue so if I run it down here then I've got the head of the queue down here somewhere where are we there we go so the first one was null before I added items and the second one 10 so uh, quite long-winded business this but um, basically that's all that's all there is to it two sets of equivalent methods and uh, one throws exceptions the other has special return values for if it can't work and uh, as I say you can also if you want un if you want an unbounded queue 
because a queue can be bounded or unbounded. You could use, for example, linked list, and a bounded queue would be array blocking queue, for example. Uh, now, there's just one more thing that I want to say um, about queues here, and in fact, this is about blocking queues, because if we look here at the queue interface, you can find that it's got a, a sub interface called blocking queue. And if you look at the um, blocking queue interface, um, then it's got another set of methods. Um, it's got, well, in fact, it's got uh, two. Um, so it's got ones that time out here. You can supply, um, so if you try to add um, a value and you can't add it, um, then you've got these methods put and take. And put will just hang your program, suspend your program um, until the space becomes free in the queue and you can add the, the value. Whereas take will, um, if you try to take an item, in other words, remove it and return it from a queue that has no items in it, then again, it will just suspend your program thread until items become available in that queue. And then you've got um, offer and poll um, that take these timeout units. So you can wait and see um, for a certain length of time if an item becomes available or not. And I just mentioned that here um, because um, if you if you go on to do any kind of multi-threading stuff and you can find, um, if you go to, um, let me just do a quick plug for my website here. If you go to www.caveofprogramming.com, you can find a whole bunch of um, lots and lots of free tutorials there and also some premium paid tutorials on like Android web programming and Swing programming. And among other things, you can find a series of tutorials on multi-threading. And in there, we go into how you can have multiple threads of code running at the same time. Um, these are free tutorials, by the way. And uh, array um, and blocking queues, such as array blocking queue, are very useful for that because you can have one thread adding items to your queue and another thread trying to remove items. And if the other thread can't remove items, it will just wait until items become available. So it's very, very useful. Uh, queues are very, very useful in um, multi-threading, especially array blocking queue. But you can, of course, you can use linked list or um, even array blocking queue from single threaded code like this if you want. Okay, so that's it uh, for this tutorial. And um, I'm not sure whether there are gonna be more items in this series of tutorials on collections. But um, probably we'll go on to look um, at uh, iterable and iterators because those are you know, very, very relevant to working with collections. Um, so join me again next time um, because I've just decided, yeah, I will add more tutorials to this series because this is useful stuff to know. And we'll look at iterators and iterable. Um, and until next time, happy coding.